Hey, what's up guys? I'm your host, Snows, and this, well, this is your boot sequence. Roll the intro and turn on the other lights. Asus is going hard into the now slightly faded mining craze with a successor to their B250 Mining Expert motherboard. The new H370 Mining Master can support up to 20 cards, but instead of doing so using buy one PCIe slots, it goes directly to USB to better support USB risers. It's honestly a very smart move considering that the old mining solution had to go from a buy one slot to a USB riser to a USB cable and then be connected to another PCI slot. Lot. By eliminating the first riser, it makes it easier to troubleshoot issues with the mining array, especially if your rig is made out of cheapo risers. On top of that, ASUS has built some software to monitor your array in case any issues come up. I mean, with ASIC miners coming for the head of all the GPU miners, I don't know if now would be the best time to get into it, but if you already have a mining array, this could be an upgrade as long as you don't mind the downtime that it causes. Moving on, we've got Intel, which just launched its Optane DIMMs. Although by launch, I do mean that they will send some to specific companies to try it out. Not to be confused with their NVMe M.2 Optane modules, this new form of memory will bring the 3DX point to your DDR4 memory bus, and it will be used as persistent memory. The advantage that 3DX point always had was its super low latency. And so far, the main thing preventing it from reaching lower latency has been been things like the NVMe protocol, the drivers required, and the file system that it uses. What they want to do is to allow the CPU to communicate directly with the memory without all of those things in its way. It is very complicated and I'll link to a video down below if you want to learn more about how persistent memory works and how Optane communicates using it, but it's safe to say that this technology will probably trickle down to the consumer in a few years since the way apps need to use the memory will probably need to be slightly changed. Remember, this doesn't replace your storage and it doesn't replace your RAM, but it might replace your storage in the future. I swear, this topic got into my brain pretty hard when I was researching it, and while I understand the sort of core concept, it is pretty hard to explain, so let's move on to my favorite segment, in case you didn't know. RBs has its own custom font and it is saucy, similar to how major tech companies like Intel, Samsung, Apple, uh, Netflix, and Google have their own fonts, Arby's decided that they would get their own, and it's called saucy underscore AF. It's pretty much just a marketing stunt, but hey, that's one more font for me to use in my video, right here, you see? I'm just gonna put it in here for fun. Follow us on Twitter, right there. Then we have Elgato, which I didn't know was in the smart home business, and their newest product is a little odd in my opinion. The Eve Aqua is basically an on-off switch for your water hose. What you do on the other end of that hose is up to you, but the smartest thing to do, or what they want you to do, is to put a sprinkler on the end of the hose. It will be controllable using Apple's HomeKit, which is kind of sad because even though I have an iPhone, I would still prefer to leave that to my Amazon Echo since pretty much everything that I have that is smart home based is controlled by my Echo. And then we have Qualcomm, which is starting its XR1 platform dedicated to VR, AR, and XR. XR is mixed reality. Basically, they're focusing on a system on a chip that will be built specifically for those purposes. As much as I like the idea of untethered VR, it probably will never come close to the PC experience gaming-wise, but the way that they want to use it on smaller devices for work or basic entertainment is pretty cool in my opinion. And if you didn't know, well, now you know. Moving on to some gaming news, Fallout 76 has just been announced and I am pretty excited about it. We don't know much about the game just yet, but here is what we can assume given the teaser and other sources. The game takes place before the events of Fallout 3, 4, and New Vegas, but around 26 years after the events that caused the original Fallout in the intro of Fallout 4, or sort of the prelude of that game. In the trailer, we see someone wake up in 2102 to a completely empty Vault 76. Now, we don't know much about the people of Vault 76, but the bunker itself is pretty well documented in Fallout 4's Citadel. 
Jason Schreier or Schreer from Kotaku says that Fallout 76 will not be a normal Fallout game. According to his anonymous sources, it will be sort of an online survival RPG. The way I see it, it will look like an online Fallout 4 with base building and other survival based mechanics. Personally, I'm super excited about it because I feel like this could be just like a much, much, much better version of current online survival games like H1Z1's Just Survive mode. And I feel like the whole genre of like survival games has kind of been left out since Battle Royale kind of took over. Link to the article down below if you want to read the full article and let me know what you think. Would you like a PvEVP type of game or would you prefer it to just be PvP online survival like no environmental effects? All right, so this is usually the time where I answer one of your questions from the last video. Although this time I received no questions in the last video, so I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just end the video right here. Don't forget to click right here for the latest video. That's the one where you should have put a question in and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to stay frosty. God damn, it's hot in here. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Also, please bear with me. I don't know what to do with my hair just yet. I'll see you on the next one. Stay frosty.